Welcome to the MSI channel where I try to resurrect an old MSI 8080 computer. Okay, so the system seems to be working pretty good now. Um, the A drive seems to be very, very consistent, uh, but the B and the C drive seem to be inconsistent. And the funny thing was, when I first um, hooked the machine up to see if it was going to work, when I got to the point where I could use disk drives, and um, I turned it on. Both the B drive and the C drive seemed to be working fine. And then suddenly um, they got kind of intermittent and then the B drive just stopped working altogether. I'll show you that, uh, DIRB. And it always gives me this BDOS error and I can never get rid of it. Um, if I try it uh, with the C drive, It also gives me an error, and then I'll try it like half a dozen times, take the disk in and out, in and out, in and out, turn it on and off, turn it on, and then suddenly it'll work great, and then it just continues to work. So I don't know what's going on. Um, but since it worked perfectly for a while, and now it doesn't, um, I can think that either it's a mechanical issue where some connector came loose, um, or it's a uh, capacitor. Um, I haven't touched any of the capacitors in this machine, and usually a 30-year-old machine, you want to go through and change all the electrolytic capacitors. And this does have a bunch of dipped tantalums, which are notorious for going bad. Um, so I think I need to look at those things. The other thing that it could be was... Um, I have about 100 diskettes, and I wanted to see uh, what were on those diskettes. And it could be that putting a volume of diskettes into the drive, some dirt got onto the head. And that was my first reaction was, oh, the head got dirty. Um, and I tried to clean the head. I have some head cleaning disks that will show you. Um, and that didn't seem to help it. But I think it still makes sense to take it all apart and use some alcohol on the heads and um, see if we can. Okay, let's take a look inside. And uh, let's see here. Pull out the uh, card. Draw. All right. So there are some capacitors on here. I'm not really sure this is the problem, but uh, we have four tantalums on this board, so we might as well replace them, check it out. Um, the reason that it, that it might be this, since we have the A drive working and the B and the C drives are flaky or not working at all, um, there, the two B and the C drives, those are operating at double density, double speed. Um, whereas the A drive is operating at a single density, a slower speed. So it could be that there's a timing issue. Um, maybe eventually we'll have to put a scope on these on these lines to see if there's any bouncing and stuff. The 50-pin uh, cable uh, is terminated at the other end, and it's one of those deals where the very last drive in the chain is the one that needs to be terminated, and all the other drives need to have their termination resistors removed. Um, so we can double check that to make sure that's that's happening as well. But um, I thought I'd take this into the garage and uh, uh, we'll take th take these capacitors out, and measure them, see if they were see if they were bad or not. And while we're at it, we might as well replace them. Okay. Wow. This is new for me. Um, haven't filmed out here ever. Uh, so I hope you can. Uh, can see things. Let me let me check the camera. And make sure you can you can see what I'm seeing. I guess that's okay. Might be a little wide angle, but that's alright. Um, so here's the card. There are four four resistors here. Um, let's go ahead and heat up the, heat up the iron. Uh, I have it on a timer that's set for 30 minutes. So, in case I forget to uh, uh, turn off the soldering iron, it automatically shuts it off for me so I don't catch, catch things on fire and burn down the house. 
Not a bad idea, I would recommend it. Um, a sponge wet. Alright. I do have a desoldering tool, but just two leaded parts, these are easy to get out, so we will do that. Let me, uh, let me check to see what the value of these are. Uh, can I read them? Uh, 4.7 and uh, 4.7 and uh, 4.7 and uh, <laughs> guess yes a 4.7 all right so should have some of those and they're marked very well on the board um, the plus plus sign is in silk screen on the board A lot of times it's good to take a photograph, make sure you put things the way they were, but this is very simple. Famous last words. All right. There's one. Oh, this is old solder. I put a little bit of a little bit of new solder on here to help wet it. Seems strange to have to add solder to remove it. Works that way. Alright. All are out. Alright, so let's go ahead and clean the holes up. We have one hole still plugged up. Uh, that one's not cooperating. Old eyes, I need a magnifying glass to see most of the stuff these days. I do like magnifying glasses though. Alright, let's, um, I have an LCR meter so we might as well use it. Um, you probably want to see this too, so why don't I uh, pause here, I'll zoom in. Alright, I think you'll be able to see that. Uh, so, this is a, uh, a Unity uh, UT612. You don't, you don't see very often on YouTube, or at least I don't. Um, but they're a, they're a nice meter. Let's see here. One of these is uh, plus and minus. Need to set the polarity right for uh, this type. Alright, that's a plus and a minus. Let's see what it says. Uh, 4.6 microfarads, that's good. And we should be able to get to ESR here if I can change the 
it's not always um, function. Let's see, kilohertz. Let's see, let's change the frequency to 120 hertz, which is more standard. Uh, and see if, there we go, ESR. So this is measuring uh, 3.6 ohms. That's on the high side. Uh, I think that's on the high side. Let's see what the other ones are. We can get out a new uh, new capacitor and see what it measures. 3.6 ohms. Uh, Plus, minus, four ohms. Yeah, maybe it is about right. Let's see if I can reach. Oops, reach back here and find some. Find some uh, capacitors. Oops. Knock here around. So, look in here. Here's the dipped, what is this one? Six point eight. Yeah, let's measure six point eight, see what it see how it measures. Which is the plus lead. Plus lead zone on this side. No? Yeah. Ten ohms. Jeez. Make a liar out of me. Uh, let's try. Of course, I don't know what the vintage of these old capacitors in my drawer are. Here's a 16, 16 volt, 10 microfarad. Hmm, 8 ohms. Well, maybe those capacitors are okay. We can always just shove them back in. Um, 22 microfarads at some voltage. 1.2 ohms. No, well, maybe 4 ohms. I mean, uh, 4 microfarads is not going to be very, very large. I think these are 4.7. They're uh, uh, yellow purple, which is 4.7. And green, we'll assume it's micro. <laughs> uh, let's Figure out, figure the long lead is plus, yeah, six ohms. All right, so I think the capacitors were good on this. We can pop them back in and uh, go from there. The jump wire, jumper wires on the, uh, on the back of the board here are um, in notation, I think, from from this is a, 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 a CCS um, CCS two four two two um, and there's a bunch of uh, YouTube posting not YouTube postings but I mean uh, internet postings on mods for this card um, and this does have the mod so there was some uh, uh, grounding problems uh, which is what this wire here fixes. Um, there's a lot of current being drawn in some area here that the trace kind of sneaked around and anyway this adds a shorter length for the uh, for the ground and then I think there's a uh, open collector drive somewhere and anyway there's some cuts and jumps and um, you can find that data online but this has all the mods uh, that it's supposed to have so my guess is um, this card is probably okay, and the problem lies elsewhere. I'll put those capacitors back in, and we'll go try something else. Okay, uh, a couple things before we go back inside. Um, I had a, uh, a box full of brand new um, uh, 10 microfarad 16 volt uh, capacitors, so I went ahead and, and replaced these uh, since we're here. Uh, might as well. Uh, so those are brand new. I did want to point out one thing I just noticed, which is uh, interesting. 
uh, the back of this board, you can see this. Um, you can see this crinkling here. Um, that means the board actually went through a wave, pro a wave solder process. Uh, so this board uh, was new from the uh, from CCS. Uh, so it was bought, assembled, and uh, and populated. Uh, I noticed it when I used some alcohol to remove the flux I used, and um, I noticed there was no flux anywhere on this board. And I thought, oh, geez, I need to really do a good job of cleaning it. And then I noticed that uh, it had gone through a wave, a wave uh, solder process. So, yeah. As is from the factory. Very nice. Uh, a few things must have been added, though. I don't. It's a couple things that are strange. One is the uh, uh, the the uh, is in focus. The LEDs um, are strange. There's three strange LEDs. Um, it could be that I replaced those at one time, just like different colors, and those are the ones I had at the time. Uh, they they none of them match. Or maybe somebody else did it before I got the card. Um, but normally these would be rectangular LEDs put on their sides and um, of probably all the same color. Probably red, red, red. Uh, but... Alright, let's give it a try.